Okay, so we've seen work and we've seen potential energy uh, due to gravity. But now what we want to do is we want to generalize the ideas we've seen to more than one dimension. Okay, so what did we see before? We saw uh, two objects and we only looked at it along one dimension. And we looked at the work done of object one on object two. And we looked at the potential energy, but we looked at it along one dimension. So how do we, uh, how do we generalize to more than one dimension? Well, um, before explaining this whole idea, the, the important point to take away is that the work done and the potential energy, or let's say rather for now the work done only depends on the end points. Okay? So we'll see what, what that means now. So say now, remember before we had this particle M2 moving only in one dimension uh, and it had this gravitational force acting on it from M1. Now, instead of just along one dimension, we allow it to move along that same uh, X dimension, but then also along this kind of circular path. Okay, so a radial trajectory, a radial path, and then a circular path. And we want to know what is the work done by this gravitational force on M2 as it moves along this path. First a radial path and then a circular path. And so what, what we know is that work, the basic idea is that work is would be the dot product between F and uh, R, right? If you remember. So the dot product tells us that it is the magnitude the magnitude of f times the magnitude of r times the cos of the angle between those two uh, vectors this is essentially what we have here if you recall so what happens if the force vector right which in this case if this object is moving in a circular motion from r to q the force vector is going to be a centripetal force and it's directed towards the center of that curvature. So that's the direction of F. That's the direction of F. And then what is the direction of the displacement vector? It would be perpendicular, right? Perpendicular. So if we have cos of 90, then we have no work. No work is done by this force so long as it's moving in the circular direction because there's this perpendicularity between the force and the displacement vector okay so that's why it says the work done from r to q from that point to that point is zero so the point that that they're trying to make here in this in this page is that uh, as it's moving in two dimensions Okay, it's got these two components. It's got a radial component, a radial component from P to R, and it's got this uh, circular component from R to Q. Okay, and the only component that where there's work done is this radial component. Okay, so the work done by object one on object 2 as it moves from P all the way from P to Q right along the path PRQ is equal to the work done along the radial displacement only work is only done along this direction because why because in this in this uh, in this direction you've got this cos of 0 so then you would have this work that's done Okay, and now the important thing is, well, I'm not sure if they get to this yet. How about we just first look at this diagram? In this diagram, let me make this big so you can see where I am. This diagram, it, it's, it's simple. There was this radial motion and then circular motion to get from P to Q. Over here, they say, well, okay, 
let's let's go from P to Q again but let's break it up let's go radial uh, sorry circular radial circular radial circular radial let's break up that motion into um, segments of circular and radial motion boom, 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 boom. and what you see is that the work uh, is equal to this it's equal to what we found before and it's one over the final position the magnitude of the of the final position minus one over the magnitude of the initial position so it's still the difference this is the point only the change in radial distance matters if you consider what are we looking at here it's the same as saying uh, it moved from there from that point to that point so we can it's the same as saying that was R what is the final that was RP and that is RQ right because it's only the magnitudes of those position vectors so this is a position vector along the X direction and this is a position vector along some arbitrary direction but still the work done is only the difference is only based on the difference between the radial directions I hope that hope you hope you're getting that so this is the work done from P to Q so the idea is that we only care about the end points we only care about the end points we only care about that point and that point and we don't care about how you got there we don't care about how you got there okay so following the same line of reasoning from equation 13 8 and 13 11 we can also write the gravitational potential energy so we looked at work now we want to look at gravitational potential energy and it looks very similar to the previous equation but here we've got R which is the distance between the two objects okay all right let's see okay then finally so this is also what I'm trying to say is that the gravitational work done on an object too depends only on the end points but so make sure that you get this idea the it only depends on the end points so the work from P to Q is independent of the path taken right so if you travel uh, if the if particle if particle m2 or object uh, m2 travels along path 1 or along path 2 the work done is the same okay um, if the work done from P to Q is the negative of the work done from Q to P from Q to P okay so here it's traveling along that direction so the work done by this gravitational force on M2 would be uh, it would be negative well or th this one over here this path from Q to P is the negative of P to Q and then the last one is that there's something called a closed path meaning that if you add up the work done from P to Q along path 1 and then the work done from Q to P you will see that it equals 0 it's a closed path okay because the gravitational potential energy depends only on the position of the end points and in this case the end points are the same so the potential energy of the two system uh, two object system is zero and the work done by gravitational force exerted by one object on the other as it moves along a closed path is also zero all right okay i hope this is helping cheers